Is this your first D&D adventure? Your first time stepping up to the plate, DMing for everyone? Not sure how to start? You can't go wrong starting in a tavern. Starting off an adventure is a classic D&D trope. My guess is, is it probably started off as people trying to recreate the scene from Lord of the Rings where the crew meets Strider in brief. But really, the tavern is a well-used place. Sometimes it can even be a trope onto itself. You have a lot of satire of it. But it's such a deep resource for starting things off. So let's talk a little bit about how you might use it to make your own adventure. So the first question your players are gonna ask are, how did I get here? Why am I here? And with any problem, this is kind of a no-brainer. So first of all, it could just be your characters like to drink. Who doesn't? I wish I were in a tavern right now. But the taverns are great because they were a place back in medieval society. You could have all sorts of different stratas of society going there, people from inside the village, people from outside the village. The daily news would be there. You'd have entertainment. It makes for a great mix, great mix of people. When you're talking about adventure design and gameplay, uh, those two questions are usually answered by the DM or whoever's designing it. The where in the opening scene and the why is the hook. Let's say when you're in the town of South Bay, you're at the inn, uh, you're at the horse's head inn with the gentle old innkeeper Nana, and she's going around and she knows everybody. You're in there looking for fortune uh, amid rumors and strange goings on. You have all the denizens, and you even have the innkeeper Nana. Oh, dearie, there was something strange going on this week. The two men in the corner may be able to tell you more. It's a good way to get them started on. This is great. This, in some ways, is like giving a kid a piece of bread. You know, they're super hungry, and it's not very nutritious, but it will hold them over until things heat up. So what we want here are good hooks. Now, theoretically, if you're writing a story, you want to get it, the hooks in by the second or third paragraph at least, uh, because if you don't, well, people probably won't stick around to finish the rest of your story. Just like I'm sure a lot of people have left this video already. What you can do is you can get your characters, get your players rather, to make their own hooks that will help you as the DM. So how do you do this? Well, the infamous Session Zero, and having them make their own backgrounds. If they don't know, you can always go to Chapter 4 in the Player's Handbook, and they can select from the different backgrounds there. If you, if they have some idea, that's great. You as a DM can sort of set it up so that at least part of their backstories will hook into this adventure. Now, another great thing are the factions. So if you're playing the pre-made D&D adventures, you have all the different factions, these and Tarim, or the Gauntlet, the Flaming Fist, all of those guys, you can bring them into it. Maybe they need some work from an adventure, from wandering adventurers. Maybe they're after one of them. Who knows? Even if you're not playing the Forgotten Realms, Faerunes, any adventure you have will have factions. In the real world, you have Italian Mafia, Triad, you have Breaking Bad style meth heads. All of these things can come into play. You just need to add a couple. And if you translate the goals of each faction into potential character goals, uh, then you might have rumors that the characters need to know heading into a story. For example, uh, if somebody had their father murdered, right? Well, maybe they would be introduced to a particularly uh, particularly disreputable gang that is famous for murdering people. 
Now you don't necessarily have to connect the two right away, but A, the character, the player should be sort of sensitive to it. And later on, they can find out, oh, they did have something to do with it. So the next part is really, you wanna make sure that you show and don't tell, or maybe tell and don't show. So you as the DM are making, are, are sort of setting the, the plate at the table. You know, you're painting the picture. You've got to let people know what's going on, but don't just tell them. You want to allow players to discover things for yourself. So there's some easy way to do this. Set the scene, but get the characters making choices and telling their own stories as quickly as possible. This is another reason why the tavern is so tempting. You could say you're in a tavern and in everybody's mind, the scene is sort of set. Now in everybody's mind, it's gonna be different, but it's sort of a comfortable, familiar place that will be easy for them to sort of play off of. You wanna give uh, some details, uh, into the plot or the scene of the character, give them a reason to be why they are. You went to the Horse's Head Inn to talk to Nana because Nana knows some people who, have, who may have some leads on a certain magic item you're looking for. So once you get the quick background, ask them, what do you do? Okay, you wanna establish the tone and theme quickly. If you're writing a mystery, let the opening scene create a sense of mystery. If your adventure is taking on a horror theme, uh, add some details that are very unsettling and get the characters out of their comfort zones. It doesn't have to be over the top, but the details do matter. If an adventure is gonna be particularly bloody and violent, have the characters see townspeople with uh, big scars, missing limbs, maybe even bloody nose, passing them on the street. It might take a few more words, but it's memorable because the big payoff is gonna be at the end. Don't give every detail in the first three minutes. Even if you created a brilliant and elaborate plot for your adventure that you know the players are gonna love, tease out the details a little bit with their actions and questions rather than getting at large chunks of expositions. Allow them to use uh, perception checks, intelligence checks. Allow them to sort of put the scene together and play off of it. The human brain can only remember about 10 things at once. Uh, if you're like me and you're probably on a Mountain Dew Cheeto filled trip while you're playing the game, uh, just get the basics and a lot, give them a way to learn some more. And the last one is make different paths uh, for them to learn the same thing. So if it's important uh, that the characters, they know the special laws at the start, if they know the Horse Head Inn is one of the few places that allows all the members of society in instead of only certain groups. This will uh, help the players start to understand where they fit into the society. If you don't know how to get started or you're not comfortable in starting it off, then just start in the middle. As soon as the players are all sat down and ready to go, say roll for initiative. And then during each round, allow them to ask one question about what's going on. Just have them fight it out, duke it out, and then you'll see what happens. So this has been a quick take of why you should just start your adventure in a tavern. What do you guys think? Is a tavern cliche? Is it a good place to start off? I'd love to see your comments down below. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, I'd still like a thumbs up. And subscribe to see more content. We'll see you back soon.